Hey. So it is the scary month of the year, the October, the time for spookies, the time for scaries, the time for scary movies, scary games. And I don't know if you guys know this, but I've been streaming on Twitch uh, every weekday for quite a long time. And during this scary month, I decided to play Silent Hill 2. The remake, of course. I started the original a while ago. I've never played the original all the way through. I played a little bit of the original. And boy, when I saw the trailer for Silent Hill 2, I was extremely skeptical about what we were going to get. I'm pretty sure most people were extremely skeptical just by the trailer alone. I don't understand how they failed so terribly in displaying what you're going to get with the new Silent Hill 2. But man, was I very, very surprised by how good this game was. I never was even going to buy this game because guess what? This game is 70 goddamn dollars. Honestly, if I wasn't streaming this game, I don't really know if I would actually buy this game to play it for myself. But let's talk about it. Is Silent 2 really worth $70? That's a big freaking number. I mean, that's just where AAA title games are now. You know, it was 50 back then. It was $49.99 back then. Moved to $59.99. Now we're up to $69.99. Can't wait for it to reach 80. Soon enough, it's gonna be $100 to buy a game. That's just where things are going. But you know, inflation and all that nonsense. So graphical wise, I would say this game is absolutely fantastic. The aesthetic of Silent Hill 2 is definitely what this game is known for. This is not a jump scare uh, heavy game, right? It's more about the atmosphere. It's more about the storyline that's going on and the psychological things that are happening. And I'm not gonna lie, I've played a lot of scary games in my day. And I would say this is definitely one of the top scary games when it comes to atmospheres. I don't think I've clenched my sphincter so hard for a consistent amount of time. I basically have given myself some solid Kegel exercises just by playing this game alone. I feel like one of the scariest parts of the game is when you go from outside to inside your first time. I feel like the more and more you play the game, a little bit less it becomes scary and more it becomes a game, if that makes sense. It's more about the puzzles. It's more about saving your ammo and, and reserving it and all that different things. And if you guys know me and know who I am, you know exactly that I handled this game with finesse and calm. Ah! <laughs> Does he have any healing? <laughs> It's safe to say this is quite a good scary game, but the game does not come without its problems. I feel like the mechanics of shooting in this game are very frustrating and quite annoying, but that is kind of the element of a horror game. You know, the shooting and fighting the bad enemies are supposed to feel difficult, are supposed to feel annoying because it makes it more stressful for the player to like survive. All right, now come here so I can kill you. I won't miss this time. Come on, right? That's, that's actually embarrassing. This is embarrassing for you. It is really embarrassing for you. Yeah, I honestly feel bad for you. Oh God. What do you mean? But I feel like you panicking on top of trying to control uh, the game itself definitely adds a layer of stress and panic. And then we get to the puzzles. There are many times in this game where I got extremely frustrated. I mean, if you watched my streams or if you go watch those videos, you could see multiple times where I get confused, I get lost. Personally, I don't even think I was that lost on puzzles necessarily, I was more lost on where to go a lot of times. Like it does give you a okay amount of direction on where to go, but all it takes is passing by one little thing and you're gonna be lost for the next couple hours. You'll have to retrace your steps multiple times and yeah, it gets extremely frustrating at times. I actually witnessed some streamers just completely quit the game and rage quit because the puzzles were too difficult or they couldn't figure out where to go and they were too prideful to look up a walkthrough, which I was very adamant about when I played this game. I made sure my chat did not tell me what to do. 
I made sure you guys didn't freaking spoil anything for me. It was all up here, baby. I figured it out by myself, all right? It was, I, I got the big brain. But at the end of the day, let's talk about it. Is this game really worth $70? Honestly, kind of. I would say that this game is sort of worth $70. It doesn't mean I would recommend going to buy it. If you are really into horror games, if you're really excited about horror games and you love psychological horrors and creepy aesthetics, this is definitely the game for you. Like I said before, like I said before, Silent Hill 2, the original, and this one, its soundtrack, its atmosphere, just the creepy noises in the background is so well done. You're going to need to have some good headphones to really enjoy. Hell, half the time I was more panicked and freaked out just by a sound effect happening on my headphones rather than a jump scare popping out. There's so much suspense in this game. It's it's honestly masterfully done. That when it comes to remakes, this is definitely top of the pile. There's been a lot of doo-doo stinky remakes when it comes to games and movies, but I definitely feel like Silent Hill 2 delivered incredibly. I would venture to say for a remake, I'd give this game an eight out of 10. Definitely one of the better horror games I've ever played, if not the best horror game I've ever played. And I feel like for me personally, that's because, you know, it's not just jump scare after jump scare, you know, that, that shit gets kind of annoying, gets kind of boring after a while. This relies way more on the environment, on the sounds, on the visuals, everything. And if you guys don't want to play the game, you can click the link down below and just watch me play the game yourselves. That's all I got today. Bye-bye.